Okay, hi, and um, welcome to Smart EU Project participatory workshops on um, social media resilience. So the Smart EU Project is a project about knowing how to deal with all this constant stream of information we're getting through social media, through Facebook, through Twitter, through TikTok, through everything. It's just constant, constant scrolling, constant media. Um, so this is a project to try and give us some tools, some tools for young people, some tools for old people, some tools for educators, so that we can just try and unpick it and try and find our way through this minefield. That's a good way to explain what's happening. Okay, maybe a less scary screen to look at. So this project is Smart EU, and we've got a lovely website on social media. No, it's not smart toolkit.eu, where you can find lots of resources. Um, here in the section we call the guide, there are resources for young people for older people, for educators, uh, intergenerational resources for families to use, uh, younger and older people to work with, together through. There's also a series of resources we made ourselves, and there's a custom search engine which only shows results from our project, um, results that we picked out from the internet because they're really useful resources, so it's a few of things to filter through. Also, if you do happen to come across a really good resource for media literacy or uh, fact checking or learning about fake news, you can share it with us here in this little contact form. So, welcome to the Smart EU project. We're going to be doing four workshops in this series of participatory workshops covering aspects of social media like disinformation, fake news, privacy, your know, digital footprint, clickbait, digital citizenship, how to use social media for good, um, civic engagement through social media, lots of interesting things, lots of other things too. This session is disinformation and fake news. Tomorrow at the same time, we're gonna be having a close look at clickbait and then next week, Next Tuesday at the same time, we have privacy and digital footprints. And then final one on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock will be social media but social good. Uh, if you do have any questions, please pop them in chat. I'll try my best to catch up with them, although it's just me at this end, sat in my lovely front room office in sunny South Wales. This will be available later on and I will answer every question, provide some links and do what I can. I want this to be something that can be used not just live now but as a resource in the future. So we are being recorded and the recorded videos will be made available. So disinformation and fake news. So disinformation, it gets uh, banded about quite widely as a term but it's got a quite precise definition. Disinformation is forms of false inaccurate and misleading information and we're talking about those things that have been designed intentionally so they're presented and promoted to intentionally cause public harm or they're intentionally to make profit so we're not talking about um, spreading illegal content online we're not talking about defamation hate speech it doesn't cover incitement to violence and it also doesn't cover satire or parody so those are not disinformation. Disinformation is things that are false, inaccurate, misleading intentionally. So they're intentionally trying to cause harm and they're intentionally trying to make profit. The fake news is not quite so serious. It's serious, but it's not quite so serious. So this is things like uh, low risk, honest mistakes by reporters, um, slip ups, things that you say on Twitter without checking that they're completely true, uh, jokes that you, you share without understanding, 
where they've come from. Um, political discourse, in some cases, in many cases. Um, clickbaity headlines, things to make us engage. But it also goes up to high risk forms, um, foreign states, domestic groups, trying to undermine political processes, um, election rigging through uh, European member states and European Union. And there are many forms of like malicious fabrications, infiltration of grassroots groups, uh, nasty stuff. So fake news is a bigger area as a term than disinformation. We can split fake news into two distinct categories. So there's stuff that has been made up to make money, stuff that has been made up to discredit other people. And then there's also stuff that's been spun. So it's just, it's got an angle. So it could be like a left-wing take or a right-wing take on a particular story. It, um, you skew the facts, you only present certain things that have been said and not the whole story. So it suits uh, a certain political or, um, or whatever. It could be environmental or whatever. It suits an, it suits an agenda. Then we've also got clickbait. So this is, you're scrolling because we're naturally addicted to scrolling. We can't help it. It's, it's something our brain wants us to do. We're constantly seeing the content. Um, as we're going through our feed, our news feed, the whatever, we see sensationalist headlines which catch our eye and make us want to click at it's not something that we're doing because we're stupid. It's just the way they have been written and designed or intentionally to make us click on it to look at it. Um, yeah, so quite often they'll be offering exclusive content or unusual content. We'll go through this in the next session in a lot more detail, but there are lots of specific phrases which are used, which are designed to make us click to find out more. And of course, Every time you click, somebody is making a profit. The more clicks, the more profit somebody is making from this, the more often advertising, the more you see their product. So clickbait, we're talking about, you won't believe this. Um, what happened next will shock you. Um, you will never believe this uh, crazy trick for these two stone in a week. You've seen it, you've seen them all. Okay, then we have uh, sensationalism. So there are some four main characteristics of things which are sensationalist. They tend to violate privacy rights. Every person, no matter who they are, no matter how famous they are, they do have a right to privacy. Uh, sensationalist articles report on tragedies and accidents that tend to over-report things that we shouldn't know about, things that we shouldn't be seeing, things that wouldn't normally be public. So detailed descriptions, uh, detailed descriptions should not be part of the reporting of the actual events. Um, sensationalism also covers reporting irrelevant topics, gossip, rumours, scandal, Things that aren't really news, they just gossip and they're interesting and it sells papers. And then finally, any reporting on children because it's very, we shouldn't be disclosing identities of minors. So anything which promises to tell us details of minors, young children, things that are irrelevant, tragedies, accidents, or violation of privacy, these are all sensationalism. And then we've got propaganda. So propaganda's got lots of negative connotations. We think of it in terms of, we, when I hear the word propaganda, I automatically think of the old war, your country needs you, 
um, like 1940s posters, but it's much more widespread than that. And sometimes it can be a good thing. So propaganda is uh, health messages, public service announcements, encouraging people to vote, they're all propaganda, they're not necessarily harmful. So propaganda is intentionally designed to invite us to, um, to have like an emotional response um, or be like, yes, that's right, or no, that's wrong, I don't believe that, or yes, I need to do that, or no, we shouldn't do that. It's very either or, very straightforward. It's often ideological, it's often political, or it can be commercial. So for instance, this poster here, there was never a point when soldiers needed socks. But it makes have that emotional response. Our boys need socks, knit your bit, and uh, all the crafty people that get their knitting needles and crochet hooks out and get involved in the cause. We'll be looking a bit more about civic engagement and encouraging people to get involved in causes in a uh, session on Wednesday the 23rd, social media for social good. But this is propaganda. So, however you perceive it, propaganda has been used to change the way the world thinks and behaves for thousands of years. We've been using it as long as we've been able to draw and write pictures. So thanks to a history of it being used to drive harmful or discriminatory messages, propaganda generally carries a negative connotation, but it can be used effectively. It can be used to relay positive messages, health messages, health recommendations, public service announcements, things like encouraging you to vote. There's a really useful resource, part of a, um, one of the partners on this project at Mind Over Media, and the link's down here at the bottom of the screen. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but I will share it later. Um, so there are lots and lots and lots of examples of propaganda on this site, which is a great education resource. And you can add to it, I think, but there are loads and loads of really good examples here and ways to learn about them. So it's the Mind Over Media project. I'll share the, I'll share the links later. So, false information can be knowingly shared to cause harm. So this is a real example. Um, this is a real example. Photographs that were used to spread the wrong information. So these are photos of parents and children in front of a hospital in Zagreb. But the photographs we used to say that the hospitals in Italy were full. So on our website, we have a lovely resource here, Fact or Fake that you can have a look at for yourself, use with classes if you're a teacher. Um, it breaks apart what to look for in a story. So here, where the photo actually come from, something to consider if it's a stock image, if it's a photo from another story, make sure that the story and the picture actually relate to each other. And to find out who wrote the story, How accurate is the headline? Are there any facts or figures to back it up? Is it written to be emotive? Is it written to make us have a response to it without actually telling us the facts of the story? We need to know who said it, who wrote it. We need to know if it's fact or opinion. So there are five ways to spot fake news.
Firstly, study the URL, so study the website, the actual address at the top of your browser. If it's a real media organisation, sorry, if it's a real media organisation, it'll have its own domain. So it might look like a real page, but look at the ending if it's com.co or L or something that doesn't look quite right. That's a big giveaway. Um, things that are blogs, dot WordPress, dot blogger, these are personal blogs quite often, although I know I we have um, dot WordPress for projects, but it's a giveaway that it's not from a bigger media organization. Anyone can have a website. Um, page layout, another good thing to look for. Um, sources, signatures, knowing where the photos, knowing where the quotes have come from within the page. Uh, anything with lots of bad grammar, randomly capitalized words, sensationist photographs and headlines, things that don't correspond to the headline or to the text, can really indicate false news. But these ones are quite obvious, but sometimes we get caught out. If you study the information about the owners, the staff, the journalists, that information should be there. You should be able to find it somehow. Um, there will be other people telling the same story if the story is true. So if you can find a few other places reporting the same story, then that gives it more credibility. And again, as I said earlier, photos can be stock photos, they can be related to other stories. You can use a Google image search if you want to um, be a superstition and track something down. If the photo has nothing to do with the picture, if the photo has nothing to do with the story, then it's probably not a reliable one. So this is back to the videos I was talking about earlier, which give you lots and lots of examples of propaganda. I'll set a task to have a look at that. So, there is a code of practice on disinformation. It's first, it's been industry agreed, it's voluntary, so there's a set of worldwide self-regulatory standards to fight this information. It's been signed by platforms, Google, Firefox, TikTok, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, all leading social networks, advertisers, and the advertising industry. And this was this happened in 2018, so it's a few years old now. And Microsoft subscribed in 2019, TikTok joined the page in 2020. So this is a set of worldwide self-regulation standards. So it's like these companies have to self-assess themselves to see if they stand up to the code or not. I'd love to know in the comments and in our meetings afterwards what you think and do you think that they actually comply to the standards that they have agreed to for themselves? Okay, so now it's over to you. I want you to find some examples of fake news. You can write them down on paper, you can share them in the chat, or you can use our Padlet here. I'll share the link in the chat soon. So your homework for this session is to find some examples of fake news and share the links on this notice board here or in the chat. OK. 
Okay. So hopefully you've learned something or enjoyed the short session, first workshop on disinformation and fake news. If you have, I'd really love you to fill out a feedback form because we are a research project and every feedback we get is helpful. So thank you very much. I will share the link soon so that you can carry on and hopefully I'll see some of you tomorrow again. Bye-bye.